So Russ, one thing that you've gotten to do recently that sounds very exciting is you've gotten to meet the president and pray with the president and interact with him. Um, what's he like? And tell us, tell us what that experience was like. Well, uh, the, the president uh, had very sharp disagreements with the president on a number of issues, uh, one of them being uh, the sanctity of human life for, for unborn children, um, another being definition of marriage, and another being some, some key questions of religious liberty. Uh, we've been involved in speaking to the administration quite a bit about, for instance, the HHS contraceptive mandate, which we think is a, a violation of religious liberty. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we've been, we've been at odds with the administration on, on many things. Nonetheless, the president has always been very, very kind, um, and his administration has always been uh, very open, willing to, willing to hear, willing to, to, to listen to, to what uh, outside groups have to say. Um, and I think um, the meeting in the Oval Office was able to have a really uh, frank and, and honest conversation with the president um, that I think was... Um, was, it was a good, uh, a good conversation, a good back and forth. And then at the end of it, uh, he said, would I pray? Uh, for him and for the vice president. The vice president was there as well. And I was happy to do that because the Bible instructs us to do that. I mean, it's right. a difficult thing to do sometimes when we have someone in a position of elected authority with whom we disagree. It's easy to pray for someone who's making decisions that we, we like. Mm-hmm. Um, it's difficult to pray sometimes for someone with whom we have disagreements. But the, the Bible says for us to do right. that. I mean, the, the Apostle Peter says to honor the emperor and honor all those who are in authority. Uh, as a matter of fact, he says, honor everyone, uh, which means we have a responsibility to do that and to pray. Uh, for Paul says for kings and for all those who are in authority so that we may live out lives uh, of quietness and peace. So that means having the opportunity to pray for the president, for wisdom, for discernment, um, for, the, for uh, God's, uh, God's direction uh, as he leads. There are all sorts of issues that I think the president ought to ought to change his mind on. I pray he will. Uh, but beyond that, I, I, I pray for, for God's blessing upon him, upon his family, uh, and, for, and for God's direction. And I think we ought, to, we ought to model that within our congregations, perhaps especially mm-hmm. when we disagree with a particular uh, elected official, and especially with children. So we're raising up children. I mean, one of the things that, that can easily happen uh, is if we like President George W. Bush, we refer to him as President Bush. Mm-hmm. We, uh, we dislike maybe a President Obama, and we refer to him as Obama. Mm-hmm. And our children, well, that's a subtle difference, but it's a, it's a big difference in teaching children right. to show honor to those to whom honor is due. And if what you're saying to children is, show honor when you agree, mm-hmm. uh, then what you're raising up children to do, then don't be surprised when you have children who are unwilling to follow the genuine spiritual authority within their churches or within their families. We're, we're able to, to teach children, I disagree with the president on this, but I still love and honor him as a, as a human being mm-hmm. and as someone that God has put in this position of authority. And so in a democratic republic, we have the freedom to dissent and to seek to change things and to, to do those sorts of things, and we do it. At the same time, we're prayerful, we're honoring, and we're... And I think about this, uh, there was a story recently about a, a lesbian legislator in Hawaii who had some concerns. She's for same-sex marriage, but she had some concerns about religious liberty that she expressed. And she said, the people on my side were very cruel uh, and, 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 and played hardball on this. Right. She said, but the Christians who disagreed with me uh, expressed love, they were praying for me. Uh, she said, and even though I disagree with, with them, I could sense the fact that they were loving toward me. I think that's the witness we ought to have uh, consistently. We disagree, we disagree honestly and openly. We don't cower in the face of any authority, but we do so with a sense of, of right honor and right, uh, and right direction of love. Now you mentioned a couple of different ways that religious liberty has been encroached on recently. Yeah. Uh, do you suspect that that kind of encroachment will continue? Yes. If so, is that is that an opportunity? What are the negatives, the, the, the benefits? What should we make of all that? I often say to people that as president of the ERLC, I really have two jobs. One of them is to keep us out of jail, <laughs> and the other is to make sure if we go to jail that we go to jail for the right reasons. Mm. Uh, now, I'm speaking hyperbolically there. I don't think we're in, in any way uh, in, in danger of, of going to jail in the United States of America for our beliefs right now. 
But I do think we need to see the fact that we come from a heritage of people, especially as a Baptist, come from a heritage of people who did go to jail uh, for the preaching of the gospel. And there's one thing worse than going to jail for your faith, and that's not going to jail because you've denied the faith. So we need to advocate in the civil sphere for our rights as citizens. The Apostle Paul did that in the book of Acts consistently. That's a a gospel-centered, godly thing to do. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we're cultivating people who have the sorts of consciences and convictions that they know when the state has overstepped its bounds and when the state has become a god. Uh, and, and so they're able to, to dissent from that. So that means cultivating churches that know how to value and prize their liberty and advocating in the public square for religious liberty for everybody. And the reason we believe in religious liberty, of course, is not because we have some special, uh, we want some special arrangement from the state. It's because we believe the gospel. Mm-hmm. We believe the gospel cannot be handed down uh, by some bureaucrat, and there will be no government bureaucrat standing with people at judgment, which means we want a free and open marketplace of, uh, of ideas so that the gospel is able to come forward in order to save. Uh, George W. Truett, famous uh, Baptist pastor of the last century, used to say that uh, the government and an established church can turn people into hypocrites, but it can't turn people into Christians. Hmm. And I think that's, that's the case, whether the government is trying to coercively name people Christians, or whether the government is trying to come in and coercively uh, name people into some generic mush of American civil religion, which is what we're facing right now. Mm-hmm. I think we need to be very diligent and stand firm on these issues.